How's it going guys? It's Jeff with Rogue 7 Tech Support. Today is the first day of Ask a Tech, so this will be part one. I got a lot of questions, so if I don't answer your question in this video, I'll get to it in a later video. So let's get started. The first question was, what happens when I use more than one antivirus? Well, two things are going to happen. One is that uh, your computer would burn up more resources than it has trying to run both of them properly. The second thing, and most importantly, is that you'll get false virus alerts, but they're not necessarily false. Antiviruses work a lot like immunization shots when you're a child, uh, whereas uh, antivirus uses viruses to detect other viruses on your system. So when you have two of them on the same system, they look at each other and see viruses uh, there go uh, conflicting and trying to attack each other or delete the other one. So that can cause a number of different issues, uh, anywhere from performance issues to uh, security issues. And it can be really detrimental to your system, so do not do that. If you'd like to layer your security, I suggest that you get an external firewall and then a software firewall. All right, so the next question uh, that I got was, what happens if a USB thumb drive is removed improperly or unsafely? Um, there's always a safely remove hardware or removable storage um, option when you come to removable storage such as external hard drives or USB thumb drives. Um, you should always remove them safely. You can do this by going into my computer uh, or the computer area, locating the drive for the external and right-clicking on it and choosing safely remove hardware. Um, doing this will prevent the uh, the bad things from happening to it, like corrupted data on the drive. If you remove it quickly and forget to safely remove it, you can corrupt the data or even damage the the external drive, the USB thumb drive or the external hard drive. You can damage it by removing it um, without safely removing it. So make sure you always choose the safe option. Alright, so the next question, another USB question, uh, what kind of USB thumb drives support Vista Ready Boost? Well, this is a two-part question, by the way. There's another question, and I'll kind of overlay both of them. Uh, to get to this question, though, generally the rule of thumb is that they have to have 256 megabytes uh, minimum, and that they be USB 2.0. Um, which is the newer version of the USB drives. Uh, if you're not sure uh, if your thumb drive is 2.0, make sure you're asking the person you're buying it from, uh, so if it's not already on the, on the package. Uh, I typically suggest that you don't try to use ReadyBoost with anything less than 2 gigs of a USB thumb drive, uh, because anything less than that you won't see much of a difference in performance. Uh, two gigs and above you'll see the most performance uh, increases. So keep that in mind, but do remember that the minimum is 256 megabytes. Alright, and the second question uh, in this two-part question is what to know when buying a thumb drive? Which is a great question because there are tons of thumb drives out there. Um, definitely get the 2.0 version. that are more compatible with uh, operating systems and generally are the better choice. Um, you want to know the read-write um, output and input. So uh, most thumb drives run around you know 20-ish, 12-ish megabits per second read-write. So if you want a high-end one, you'd be looking somewhere for 30 plus megabits per second. That's the high-end one. Um, so as always with everything, you get what you pay for. Um, so if you want just a, a cheap USB thumb drive to store text documents on or whatever, um, then a cheap one would be fine. You can find a cheap USB 1 gig thumb, thumb drive for about 20 bucks. Um, but if you'd like something more for performance upgrades on your computer using Vista Ready Boost or any kind of caching through a USB device or any bigger um, programs if you're trying to boot an operating system off a thumb drive, or anything like that, you're going to want a high-end thumb drive, so you're going to want to spend a little bit more money and try to shoot for 2 gigs and more 
with a read write of generally about 28 to 40 uh, megabits per second. Those would be high end. The highest one that I've ever seen, and I own one, is a 50 megabit per second thumb drive. So that's what you would need to know when purchasing a USB thumb drive or any other external drive. You always get what you pay for, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then the, th the last question that I'm going to cover today is uh, based around online storage security, um, such as personal websites. Some people will sell online storage for um, files and backup files. And the question at hand is, how easy would it be for a hacker or somebody that wanted to get into one of those sites and take your files? How, how secure are your files on online storage? Well, I know from my website, I go through a, a domain, uh, godaddy.com, and you'd actually have to know my username and password. Um, and GoDaddy and other domains typically are pretty tough to get into unless you know the password. Um, it's virtually impossible to crack one of their servers. They're very, very highly encrypted and they, they make sure to send um, alerts when uh, somebody's been trying to break into your account. So they'll send an alert to your active email address linked to that domain, um, letting you know that uh, somebody's been trying to break into it. Um, so always use a secure password for anything online, uh, whether it be MySpace or um, Google Docs, which is my next portion of the online security thing. Um, Google Docs was brought up in the same question, and how secure is it if I put up an Excel word sheet, spreadsheet or something and it has business information on it? How secure is that? Well, on Google Docs, it's directly linked to your Gmail or Google account and again it's very highly encrypted. I tried to contact Google about it and they wouldn't give me uh, a direct answer. They said that the encryption was more than 512 megabit encryption which doesn't say a lot um, other than that it's it's pretty pretty tough to crack. It'd be really tough to crack. So it all comes down to your your Google account password and how to make that more secure. Um, I've mentioned in previous videos that you might want to consider using a passphrase rather than a password with alternating characters such as capitalization and lowercase with other types of ACII characters such as the at symbol, the pound symbol, exclamation marks and make sure you mix them up uh, and don't keep your passwords in a public area. So if you have important passwords, um, put them in a safe or a safe place so somebody can't get a hold of them and uh, exploit them. So when it comes to online storage, if you're trusting somebody else to use um, to store your files, uh, such as if somebody were to ask me to store their files on my website, you'd want to, of course, trust me first not to um, exploit you and spread your files everywhere. And then, again, you should always have your own account so you can access these files, add files, and remove them whenever you so choose. Um, and again, password, 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 password needs to be very secure, very strong password. Don't use cheap passwords. So, that wraps up the first part of Ask Attack. Like I said, if I didn't get to your question, I will try to in a later um, Ask a Tech series um, episode. And if, as always, if you like my work, uh, I'd appreciate it if you would rate, comment, and subscribe. Till next time, this is Jeff with Rogue 7 Tech Support Bing You. Farewell.